so abhimanyu uh, have you been to the interview state before yes ma'am twice before this okay and what happened how uh, much marks did you get ma'am i appeared for the interview in 2022 i got 193 then uh, what happened means were bad yes ma'am matlab bahut zyada score nahi tha in mains so i was allocated danix as part of last year civil services you joined uh ma'am i joined danix acha ma'am i have not joined as yet i'm uh, basically on my notice period in nabard so after that i'll be joining in danix okay all right okay abhimanyu so what is sonipat and mahabharat connection am sonipat uh, is was one of the five villages that was uh, basically uh, demanded by the pandavas uh, very good in, what was it called mean it was called as sonprast uh, everything was prast okay very good now uh, tell me how can nabard be a catalyst for development of agriculture correct development of agriculture or i should say before that i should ask what do you think should be the priorities for agriculture then you say how can nabard do it right ma'am um uh, currently the priorities for agriculture should be uh, first that it should be done on scientific basis like ma'am there is an over exploitation of our uh, resources be it soil be it water whereas we can do it in much less resource intensive way and also with less usage just of just give me an example how can soil be used less intensively ma'am uh, like the practices that we are deploying the excess use of fertilizers please specify, please specify yes. here i'm so like the soil pesticide. is fertilizer acha and that is leading to a lot of soil degradation hmm. so if that is not there so we can prevent our soil health in that case i thought in fact like uh, usar soil you have to use pyrites chemicals to get it into shape yes so ma'am but very very saline indeed ma'am for a uh, reclamation of it we require a uh, gypsum treatment especially in alkaline soils pyrites but ma'am yes. once the for for for, uh, for saline it is pyrites Old, good old pyrites anyway you, okay that's fine that's fine you know better right yes ma'am so uh ma'am with that treatment once it can get reclaimed but after that excess use of fertilizers okay. will further right, uh, degrade hmm. second ma'am what we need to do in agriculture is collectivization of farmers because ma'am uh, ultimately If, if we need to get a good bargaining power for farmers if we need to create good storage infrastructure for trading purposes but there purposes. are cooperatives there are cooperatives all over the place cane cooperative seed cooperative this cooperative all kind of cooperatives so what is why future tense is already there milk ma'am, cooperatives a... all cooperatives are there indeed ma'am we have cooperatives in the country but still the requirement is much much more what we uh, are currently able to cater to and that's why the government has come about with a scheme called farmer producer organization where fpcs the farmer producer companies are being formed in this regard ma'am third is the complete old wine in new of... bottles that's an old wine in a new bottle all right what else ma'am and third would be the entire value chain uh, uh, revamp ma'am what is happening right now in the pre production and the post production stage we do not find the requisite uh, infrastructure plus we do not also find the uh, the strength of farmers in those in, in those various nodes of value chain like if we talk about trading storage processing we do not see farmers over there ma'am so if they would be there so better processing better storage and better price uh, uh, realization for the farmers would take place but don't you think there are there are areas of special competency you i mean it's very good to talk about stakeholders involvement but there would be mechanism rather than getting into everything there is a competency then there are specialized agencies for that don't you agree ma'am currently there are specialized agency but more or less it is in the unorganized sector uh, especially ma'am uh, if we talk about the trading and also uh, to some extent storage ma'am only the processing part we see is that there is specialization 
there are big uh, companies that are uh, basically into food processing. So, so you uh, actually think that uh, farmers can help in trading and help in storage? Hmm? I might definitely think that because I have seen myself, we have worked on it and we have also found very good results. Where? Uh, Ma'am, in Karnal district, we did some experiment with the onion crop. Uh, we diversified some area of paddy to kharif onion, but along with it, we also uh, channelized our energy in the value chain of it. Just by so creating... Your onions were all safe and they were not... Uh, last year, we had the crisis when two rubby crops came out together and they had to... It was so hot in February, it was like a heat wave and they had to do distress sale and all that. So your Sonipat, your Haryana onions, which basically Karnal onions were all safe from that? They didn't have a problem? Ma'am, la... Ma fortunately, we did the Kharif onion crop and we got it harvested. So it's only one crop in a year? One crop of onion? Yes, ma'am. Only the paddy. The naturally, Ravi didn't, Ravi didn't affect you. In um, Maharashtra, etc., they do two, three crops a year. Okay. Indeed, ma'am. All right. So Very we good. harvested it in October uh, season, which is also the season where the prices of onion have been historically. Very we can move onion. on now. Very good. We can move on. Yes, so uh, there's a lot of talk of one country, one election. Tell yes, me two pros and two cons of it. Just two pros and two cons. Uh, Ma'am, the resources that we require to conduct the elections, like the financial and the manpower, ma'am, both is very high. So that will uh, basically prune that need if we have simultaneous elections. Second, ma'am, I believe is the normal functioning of the government hampers, like new projects cannot be started, new schemes cannot be introduced in the model code of conduct period. You know what? So, I have a very contra view on that, of the second point, you know. Elections get the work done. Look at the number of space launches suddenly before the election. Look at the number of project launches before the election. All the work happens only before the election. It's like in government, we say meetings. Meeting ka kaam ye hota hai, uske pehle kuch kaam ho jata hai ke liye. So too, before the election, everything happens. We could have paced our space launches throughout the year. Just before the election, all the work gets done. Don't you agree? All bridges, right, left and center, bridges, roads, everything, inaugurations, all over the place. So actually, work is getting done now. <laughs> anyway, okay. What are the cons? Ma'am, cons first is the uh, I believe the physics visibility aspect. Like, uh, ma'am, even till the 1967, we had the simultaneous election, but uh, till 1967 or in 1967, by happenstance. Ma'am, from 1952 to 1967, the sink was there uh, mm -hmm. in the state and the central election. We'll discuss, okay. So yes, what is the point you're making? So ma'am, suppose there is a need of by-election or if there is a hung assembly and there is a requirement of a re-election. So in mm -hmm. that case, ma'am, the sink with, uh, will again uh, break. So mm -hmm. this is one feasibility aspect, ma'am, mm -hmm. of it. Second, I believe is that, ma'am, there would be a kind of uh, uh, intermixing of regional, local and national issues. Very good. Very analyzed. Okay. There have been a lot of... Uh... Suspensions in this parliament. What is the procedure? What are the options available to the speaker in such a matter? Can you name them? That's the procedure. There were many procedural options available. The rules of business. What 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 are those options? Ma'am, uh, I believe, uh, ma'am, I'm, I'm not exactly aware oh, about never the mind, various. Never mind. Things. We can we can leave that then. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> tell me from India's point of view. Which conclusion of the Ukraine crisis, war crisis, whatever you call it, will be the most favorable from India's point of view? And don't say ceasefire. I expect more from you. Ma'am, uh, I believe that the, the basic issues why the Ukraine uh, crisis first broke out was the NATOization of the Russian near borders. So somewhere, ma'am, if Russia gets an assurance from the West, that there would not be any further uh, 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 intrusion of NATO in its near borders, and rather they would uh, not include the countries on its uh, in its neighborhood. So mm -hmm. that assurance, plus uh, if Russia also somewhere uh, respects the territorial integrity of Ukraine and comes out with a, a kind of... Uh, what do you mean by the situation? latter? So they should ret return Donbass? They return Donbass or they want that? They should keep it. What, in your opinion, would be the best? And what about they, the Black Sea? 
Um, I believe that they should not retain Donbass, and if at all, they should be uh, there should be more autonomy provided to those regions within the framework of the Ukrainian territory. Itself. And the Black Sea, a warm port, Odessa, etc. Sebastopol, the Sebastopol is already there. Yeah. Ma'am, in any case, Russia has already annexed Crimea, so perhaps their requirement for uh, uh, a, a warm port is already uh, quite... But isn't important. the Russian strategy to connect up and secure that area? And there is a strategy, but ultimately... Okay, so what you are saying is, what are you saying? You are saying basically that the, the main, main uh, impetus was Russia's fears and they should be addressed. Hmm? Yes, ma'am, exactly. Okay. Very good. And my last question now on Hamas Israel. Where do you think it will end? Um, uh, Israel has stated very clearly that unless and until it uh, obliterates the network of Hamas infrastructure and also eliminates the top leadership, it would no, not go for Where do you uh, think, my, repeat my question, where do you think it will end? Ma'am, ultimately, uh, I believe that Israel is going to uh, uh, even further its strikes unless it un until it takes down Hamas leadership. But I also see because the tremendous international pressure is building up, so they would come to the table and somewhere uh, ultimately it will go for a kind of accord or a peaceful resolution. Okay, thank you. Navneet. Thank you, ma'am. Good afternoon, Abhimanyu. <laughs> Good afternoon, sir. Abhimanyu, you come from Haryana. Yes, sir. Uh, lately, I think two years ago, Haryana passed a legislation which was subsequently challenged in High Court, reserving 75% jobs for locals below a certain threshold level of salary. Do you think it was uh, in uh, a good legislation or uh, it was uh, it's such kind of legislation are dangerous to the you know the unification of uh, the, of the uh, to the country sir i believe that uh, it was a political promise done by one of the political parties and uh, it was there in the election manifesto so yes it had political overtones but at the same time there was also this also an issue of high unemployment rates in Haryana. So even the political issue only came about uh, because of demand from the locals. And so every political party has to listen to it, especially when it comes to the power. But if we see it from the national perspective, I believe sir, such laws uh, do hamper the national integration because we have a common citizenship in our country. And it would only lead to kind of bigger thy neighbor policies. Like if all state governments start implementing such laws, we would not be having any kind of integration and movement of people across the states. And that's why High Court has very clearly in its judgment mentioned it, that it goes against Article 14, right to quality. It also goes against free and fair trade, free trade and profession uh, right for the employers. And also it uh, goes against the right for free movement of people. So, uh, oh. yeah, yes, sir. Why the Haryana people are people hailing from this area who are not getting employment, whereas people coming from Bihar, people coming from uh, south, they were getting employment uh, in Haryana. What is the reason? Sir, the major issue is that the uh, the kind of employment that people are seeking or people were seeking in Haryana was mainly in the high uh, paid jobs. But that requires a certain amount of skill. So somewhere there was a skill gap. It's not that the people from Haryana are not getting high paid jobs, but everyone from Haryana cannot get that, sir. So uh, this was somewhere and the low paid jobs, they were not much interested in doing, which they were getting. So this was the dichotomy that I see in this case. Why industry was against uh, this law? Sir, industry wants to have uh, the best possible HR with it, human resource. And uh, from wherever they get it at a decent, uh, say, pay, so they will try to arrange for it. 
for restricting them to a certain area or the people i believe sir it hampers their uh, efficiency and productivity as mm -hmm. per uh, their requirements uh, recently uh, you must have read it in newspapers the government came up with a policy of allocating satellite internet bandwidth you know there are some companies who are interested in introducing satellite internet in india and they came up with a policy do you know anything about that the how the spectrum is going to be allocated oh uh, sir i am not aware about the technical details of it but uh, what from what i can remember uh, jio was interested in rolling this out reliance jio uh, and also there were news like starlink network was to be used for some purposes but this is what i can recall sir i'm not aware about the technical i'll i'll, I'll give you a hint the previously the spectrum was allocated you know the cases went in supreme court uh, after the supreme court judgment the spectrum was allocated through auction what is the other method of allocating spectrum okay uh, Well, let's move on. Uh, now you are an engineer. I think you are a mechanical engineer by background. Yes, sir. Uh, the government is putting a lot of emphasis on introduction of electric vehicles. Yes, sir. Do you think it is a good move uh, in the long run, or it's just a you know kind of a uh, making a noise about it, and it's not going to make any change sir uh, i believe it is a very good move by the government uh, sir there are two re uh, two main reasons for it sir in the short run what we are doing is is that we are substituting the oil requirement which is a huge burden on the uh, imports for us we are substituting it with fossil fuels because we have some good coal reserves so that is the short uh, run sir so indeed today we may not be able to reduce the pollution levels because the electricity that is being used for charging the batteries is also coming from the fossil fuel but in the long run sir as our energy mix is going to change towards renewable energy sources we will be able to see a significant de decline in the emission levels and that will reduce a lot of pollutions and also greenhouse gas emissions you had a term called china plus 1 yes sir can you tell me what it is all about sir uh, basically it came in the aftermath of uh, the covid-19 pandemic and also uh, the trade war that is happening between china and uh, many other countries basically it is about offshoring uh, or or looking for more avenues for investment for manufacturing facility and for supply chain apart from china now most of the manufacturing supply chains are concentrated of all the western countries in china so it is about looking for other countries as well so that there is no over dependence on china in that regard sir okay thank you abhimanyu thank you sir Vijay, uh, Abhimanyu, good afternoon. Very good afternoon, sir. Uh, you are a student of political science, right? Yes, sir. Uh, if I say the notion of democracy has changed over a period of time, what will be your response, sir? so democracy is like all other concepts in uh, political science it's also a fluid and evolving concept now uh, i believe sir that democracy somewhere have become uh, uh, say mass democracies populist democracies we also see uh, emergence of strands like ultra nationalism in certain countries including us netherlands france and brazil so uh, it is evolving sir the premises the way the people are being mobilized like sir initially we have had mobilizations based on caste and 
religion so ethnic criteria were uh, famous or were, were more prominent but now sir we see that even developmental issues are taking to the forefront so democracies are evolving in this way and as people would get uh, say more educated and uh, that regard. excellent excellent uh, nabard you know is a refinance uh, organization yes sir now can a refinance organization also contribute to change in technology or change in practices in agriculture sector can it influence is the question uh, sir directly definitely it's difficult to uh, impact it but indirectly definitely sir a lot of things can be done now sir if refinance is provided for uh, say disseminating a particular technology at a subsidized or at a lower rate vis-a-vis -vis the conventional things sir definitely that impacts the ultimate finance rates now if a 1 to 2% decline or lower interest rate is provided to the farmers ultimately they will definitely shift to newer forms of technology or practices so indirectly it may take some time but it can definitely be done. Okay, so you are referring to differential rate of interest, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, tell me, you know, paddy is a water logging crop. Flood yes, irrigation, sir. water logging. Why are, why the system, the agriculture system in India is not able to uh, reform it or come out of it? Uh, sir, the major reason why paddy is still prom a prominent crop is the assured procurement at MSP price. So both things, these things are working in tandem because procurement is not happening for all the crops. It's only happening for a couple or, of crops and paddy being prominent. And second also, sir, there is a demand, there is a perennial demand for paddy. Now, it is a staple crop in most part of parts of the world so it has a domestic demand it has a demand in the pds and it also has a demand in the international markets so somewhere that also is is something a kind of a shock absorber for the farmers because the price of paddy is not going to fall drastically whereas other crops it may so happen so these two no, things no, are no, hold on hold on hold on my question was why paddy is not able to come out of flood irrigation? Paddy can be grown without with less water also. Okay, sir. Sorry, sir. I uh, could not understand the uh, question. Doesn't Sorry. matter. Doesn't matter. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, the alternatives to the flood irrigation method, uh, they have been tried. Like one is the most prominent is the direct seeding of rice. Now, uh, there are machineries and technology available to undertake that. But, uh, sir, what I have come across uh, in my limited experience of the thing is that there is an issue of weeds that grows a lot when we are doing DSR, direct seeding of rice. So, somewhere the, uh, the ICR and the uh, state agriculture universities, they are working upon that the issue of weeds because a lot of weedy sites otherwise in these, is being used in those areas. So if that can be uh, tackled, sir. So DSR rice can be a very good alternative. Okay, very good. Final question. <laughs> Should right uh, of marriage be made a fundamental right or not? And why? Sir, uh, right to marriage as per one's choice, is already a derived right under Article 21, the right to life and liberty. And the Supreme Court has uh, stated it in various judgments. So I believe, sir, it's already there in a, as part of fundamental rights, and we may not require to insert it for uh, like a specific for a specific purpose. So uh, hold, believe, on, sir, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You are telling it is already a part of derived fundamental rights. Can, if if that is so, can Supreme Court enforce this right as they are mandated by way of uh, writs uh, for enforcement of fundamental right? Uh, uh, 
fell she more upon it yeah okay 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 all the best thank you thank, thank you, you. varun okay all uh, right so kubair first you take over yeah the csr expert all right so good afternoon everyone and good afternoon abhimanyu i hope you're doing well good afternoon sir yes i am doing well sir great abhimanyu uh, so we talk about viksit bharat you know we talk about uh, the samrit kal and towards 2047 india aiming to become a developed economy however uh, what are the constraints shall we say of india when it comes to india's neighborhood there are some colonial legacies for example the partition in the subcontinent do you think that might hinder india's desire for becoming a viksit bharat do you, do you think so we need to get our house in order in south asia uh sir a peaceful neighborhood and also uh, a peace at the borders is a very important for any country to prosper secure neighborhood is important but i believe sir it has not hampered our uh, rapid growth even in 75 years of after our independence we have had these issues and much more uh, rigorous than what we have currently uh but yes it will be desirable if we can have a permanent solution to our borders but in any case it won't hamper our uh, uh, growth story i do not see it sir. so do you think a failed pakistan and a failed afghanistan and uh, sort of you know in stable sri lanka and maldives and india growing at a rapid pace do you think that will not hamper india's regional aspirations sir it will uh... hamper to an extent but if we see in terms of say economy so we are not that much dependent as far as trade is concerned we are having very negligible trade if it comes to afghanistan and pakistan maldives is of no significant size uh, that can impact our economy and in, even in sri lanka so we have a very limited kind of uh, uh, that thing but yes as a regional leader as a global leader we'll aspire that our neighborhood remains uh, intact especially uh, our friendly countries like sri lanka and so we have been able to manage that very well the kind of uh, uh, crisis they were in sri lanka so we were the first responders to it and we did quite well to ensure that it's on right track of recovery so we have already showcased that sir so are you suggesting abhimanyu that india do has been advocating multilateralism from the last two decades however when it comes to regionalism if you compare south asia with asean or with european union or even with the latin american bloc uh, we are nowhere near them so hence are you suggesting that india should be comfortable with uh, promoting more multilateralism but ignoring regionalism uh, sir no ways we should be comfortable in it but at the end of the day uh, it it's not just india who can ensure that in asean integrations or every country uh did their bit but if there are some deliberate roadblocks by some country i guess uh, it won't be possible for india or any other country to uh, ensure a very connected region but yes we are doing our bit sir we are also looking more eastwards now sub regionalism we are doing the bbin framework we are going for bimstick right and also the indo pacific region so we are catering to the requirements of south asian countries in a way or the other but as far as pakistan is concerned sir we have uh, the limitations because it's our policy that uh, terrorism and uh, talks cannot go hand in hand all right all right my next question to you i'm manu is uh, the direction of brics in the coming years you see 10 years back 12 years back you know when this block was formed uh, a lot of aspirations were there in this block a lot of promises were there in this block however things as they stand today specifically uh, between india and china what do you think is the future of brics and with this expansion of brics happening how do you see that uh so there had been much more uh talks of brics like being the next big thing some 10 years back and sir there was also the highest point i would say was the uh, was the 2014 fortalize declaration where we uh, came up with the idea of new development bank to take on uh or making uh, making the global financial institutions more democratized so we did very good in that but over the years obviously due to the india china tussle uh, there has been some uh, stalling in the progress but as far as the expansion thing is concerned sir this is a very welcome uh, development that is happening now if we see the 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 countries that will be part of the expanded brics so they are major oil suppliers 
and in BRICS we have two ma major oil importers of the world. So it will be a kind of good energy balance. Second, sir, they also have a lot of petrodollars. So kind of investments that are required in uh, the developing countries like India, South Africa, that will be catered to. Third, also, sir, that the stability in the Middle East, which is also of pivotal concern to us, that will also be ensured. And also with more countries joining it, the voice of BRICS, which is always for uh, a kind of global, uh, for the global south and also for reforming the multilateral institutions, that will also grow. So I see there is a, a bright light in uh, in the future for, for BRICS, that case. Right. All right, perfect. So Abhivanyu, do you understand or can you define the term blood diamonds? Sorry, sir. I'm currently unable to recollect it. All right, no problem. Uh, so Abhivanyu, one last question is that uh, comment upon India's dehyphenation policy when it comes towards Israel and Palestine is concerned. You believe that India in the last couple of years has successfully dehyphenated its policy vis-a-vis -vis Israel and Palestine? Uh, sir, we have to a large extent uh, dehyphenated our Israel and Palestine policy because even if we see the current conflict that is going on, initially, sir, we did not support a ceasefire because somewhere we uh, we had this notion and it was true also that it was a kind of terrorist attack and it was against the territorial integrity of Israel. But when it came to like excessive use of force by Israel in Gaza, we are now supportive of uh, the ceasefire uh, resolution. So somewhere this showcases our dehyphenated approach. We have always called for a two-state solution. So that has remained in our policy. And also we are developing uh, infrastructure projects in Ramallah, which is in uh, West Bank. So somewhere we are, uh, uh, we have been able to manage our relationships without having a bearing upon each other. So I believe it has been a very uh, successful policy as far as uh, Israel-Palestine is concerned. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Abhimanyu. Varun, sir. Uh, Ma'am, you take it. Thank you, sir. I think let's call it. No, no, right. go ahead. Okay, uh, a few questions on volleyball, right? Uh, you play volleyball, right? Do you still play, Abhimanyu? Uh, sir, sometimes on weekends, I okay. get the time right. to play. Uh, how do we encourage uh, women volleyball in India? Uh, any thoughts on that? Uh, sir, first, I believe, is the requirement of infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Now, we uh, I feel that there is dearth of good uh, or like uh, the sound volleyball uh, courts in the uh, in especially in the blocks or the village areas so somewhere mm -hmm. in uh, say the block level or the school level sir if there are volleyball courts then definitely uh, we can encourage more uh, uh, like more students especially girls to take up the sports mm -hmm. second also is the requirement of coaches now for that we need to uh, recruit more coaches in uh, for our uh, uh, in our stadiums, in our schools, for mm -hmm. uh, encouraging, uh, you know, girls to take up the sport. So mm -hmm. I believe that these things initially can help. Uh, okay. Right. In, How has been India's performance in international events in volleyball? Sir, we have been among the top 10, 20 uh, countries when it comes to volleyball. Mm -hmm. uh, at one point of time, sir, we were ranked six uh, in the in the early 2000s. So that was the highest point. But uh, unfortunately, sir, we have still not got a medal at the World Championships or the Olympics. Mm -hmm. And we have not also qualified for the Olympics as yet. So uh, maybe uh, in the times to come, sir, our team is very good. We have been among the top teams in Asia. So maybe we can qualify for the international events like Olympic and get some laurels for our country. Okay. Uh, what's a libero? Yeah, you know, there's a specific term used for a player, right? Can, who's the libero? Uh, sir, libero plays behind the attack line and it's mainly, uh, he's the, uh, he's only for the defend, defense purposes. Mm -hmm. Now, we have a rotation rule in volleyball, sir. Mm -hmm. So, once the libero has to go ahead of the uh, attacking line, he's substituted with the regular player. Mm -hmm. And once uh, that regular player comes, again back to the attacking line so libero substitutes that player so libero mainly is for uh, uh, ensuring a good defense okay uh, 
Uh, you know, there's a, you know, uh, a organization which is associated with the formation, right? Uh, like uh, how the volleyball, how it was, you know, created or invented perhaps, right? Can you name the organization and the persons who were involved with it? Uh, so volleyball was basically started uh, in the YMCA's by the mm -hmm. by the YMC organization uh -huh. and uh, the term was coined and popularized by William Morgan mm -hmm. in the 1890s mm -hmm. uh, so that's what i can recall as about the history thank of the right, that's fine thank you thank you okay thank you abhimanyu that comes to the end of the formal interview what did you think of the interaction today uh um, i believe it was a very good interaction and uh, Perhaps I was able to answer some questions. Well, some questions I could have done better. You know, I think you were uh, outstanding, absolutely. Mm. Your information base was good. You thought before you replied. You prioritized your answers. You maintained balance and you maintained calm. Wonderful things. Absolutely. Uh, where one, on certain opinion questions, where one was disagreed with the opinion you had, but the argument you used was such a good argument. That's what it's all about. One may agree or disagree with the conclusions, but the logic for reaching up to it is important. And what I liked particularly was the balance you maintained and a calm you maintained. And you didn't go overboard on anything. So um, I think it was excellent, absolutely. I, one or two occasions, I felt that you could have been a little more brief and to the point. Like agriculture, etc. Yeah. I couldn't get to the Nabad question at all because you kind of strayed about there a bit. Maybe it was just the beginning of the interview or warming up. I particularly liked your election on uh, your 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 answer on one one election. Uh, very balanced, very calm, had everything there. Um, I think uh, we could not ask Danix any question on that. So I'm sure you already well versed with the Great Nicobar project, and uh, what is strategic and what is not strategic strategic there. That would be important to know because Danix and somebody may ask that. Otherwise, I really have nothing further to say except that I hope that you get through because you are the kind of person that one is looking for in the bureaucracy. All the best. Thank you Lovely. so much, ma'am. Good afternoon, Abhimanyu. I will agree with madam. Uh, you done well. And uh, my just simple advice will be keep up with the reading before your interview. And that will, I'm sure that you will be able to qualify. And you were balanced, you were composed, you didn't, uh, you know, get rattled by any question, and uh, you presented yourself well. So I wish you all the best. Thank you, sir. Vijay, uh, Abhimanyu, I'll use a simple word called outrightly promising. As far as you are concerned, you were you. Uh, very well analytical in expression, and uh, mostly to the point. However, one question when I asked you about right to marry, you were, you know, sort of fumbling. I'll give you some advice. Uh, you may consider it. See, all fundamental rights are based on three basic principles. Life, liberty, equality. You use the right to equality in that... Uh, 70% reservation for Haryana natives, etc. That was well done. But what I'm trying to say is all fundamental rights are based on these three principles. And right to marry does not fall under any of these three principles. And if you have, want to have a litmus test, then you think about whether any of those five writs under Article 32 uh, article uh, 32 can be enforced against any such right. Tomorrow there may come a question, right to sleep, whether it can be made a fundamental right or not. Then Supreme Court or state cannot ensure how to make a person sleep. So just keep that in mind, okay? All the best. Right. Thank you, sir. Uh, right. Uh, yeah, so Abhimanyu, you come across as a very fine, well-read young gentleman, very confident. And of course, as the senior panelists have already suggested, that very well-balanced and calm and composed in her answer. However, I must suggest that uh, continue reading newspapers, continue reading good editorials from the Indian Express and the Hindu. They're very important. 
specifically good articles you know which keep on coming about there is there's a lot happening you know things in the foreign policy and you know as far as india's outreach towards the world is concerned so please do read more articles and if possible i'll personally suggest i do i'm about to give it a reading uh, s jay shankar's new book why bharat matters do give it a read as well if you get time yes sir sure yeah. right uh, do we have a date uh, abhimanyu of the interview uh, sir it's not yet out okay we have time right uh, i would say just uh, when we talking about like women volleyball uh, that answer we, uh, we can refine more by using more parameters right uh, obviously you, i think you haven't really uh, you know thought of the question before maybe and that's why it, it it came out as like okay okay these are two things i can do right we can structure it really well as you know you talked about uh obviously various things but i think we can uh, do a offline thing for that have you prepared overall waise volleyball ke sare questions you mentioned the ymc and everything well so have you uh, prepared sir most of the questions i have prepared but uh, there are okay. still gaps See, i believe ha wo opinion wale questions you know ki okay you know let's say you made the head of the sports department how would you improve volleyball that's you know should be you know a you know parameter based answer from you because you are like very senior now right agm right you senior yeah so you know the, maybe i would say a thoda better abhiman you can do better than this that's all right but lovely interview right mind you and right it was uh, great having you ma'am right take it away okay all the best that's all we have to say and i already said my piece that i hope you get through we really I would like people like you in the bureaucracy get through all the best thank you so much ma'am so all the best all thank the best good day. good day sir